Uh, so I've just done the psychology of science 12 marker. Um, I'm going to have a go at doing the one for reductionism now. It very much depends on how they word the question. If they word the question, like discuss the extent to which psychology can be used reductionist, it's very similar to the psychology of science one that we've just done. But it might say something as simple as what's the strengths and weaknesses of viewing behaviour as being reductionist. So you're using the same points, but you've just got to link it back to that. I'm going to do this one because it's a bit harder than just saying what the strengths and weaknesses are because you've got to make sure that you're discussing the extent to which it can be viewed as reductionist. Um, so it's not just saying what the strengths and weaknesses are. And I've copied these over from the PowerPoint. So you've been given this so you can have a look at that. And you can use the ones that we talked about um, when we brainstormed it on the board. Uh, that's fine too. Um, but these ones, you know, are quite straightforward. So we can do these. Like with the psychology and science one, you need kind of an introduction to kind of explain what uh, reductionism is. Um, so you might have a look at the PowerPoint and see what it says. Um, it's all about reducing it down to its component parts. So um, uh, reductionism is the belief that by, so it's basically this bit here, uh, belief by reducing human behaviour behavior down to its component parts that it is easier to determine its cause. Um, this contrasts to the holistic, holistic view that behaviour is, is um, here it is a sum of the component. So, um, psychology can be considered reductionist if what we got? due to use of laboratory experiments, experiments which manipulate IVs and measure DVs to establish causality. You'll see that this is very similar to the psychology science one. The points that you use are, are going to be the same, but you just use them in different ways to answer the question. So reductionists used to, so basically an example of a study, so for example, um, what, what studies have we got that are reductionists and just look at one explanation, but we have to have a study that has IVs and DVs as well, because you could say that things like, you know, Milgram studies reductionists, because it's just saying that the people, the, the 40, you know, white males from America, from New Haven, that were in that study, that they obeyed because of the authority figure in the environment. That's quite reductionist because it doesn't take into account the dispositional factors of the personality. They could that you know that could have explained uh, why they were all being or disobedient. Uh, so we need kind of something that's got IVs and DVs that's quite reductionist. It's in a lab. Um, we could probably use Grant. So for example, Grant. Um, Grant, Grant investigated context dependent. Oh, for example, Grant found that context that I'm redefining that if that if um, participants participants um, were in matching 
contexts when learning and recalling information. There are significant So this here, quiet, quiet, that's oh, quiet, 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 noisy, noisy, uh, noisy. The context of learning and recording information, um, learning and recording information, they were significant for the data, for any the context of mismatching. But you might want to put what information they recall, so you know, such as the, the short answers or the um, you know, multiple choice, you can put that in. Um, let me put that on the short answer. Multiple choice. So, if they're best in this context, we're mismatching. Um, Grant concluded. Manipulating only the contexts, the studies reductionist, as there could be other factors affecting the participants' memory. Participants, participants memory, other than context. Psychological study reduction is due to its use. Projects by genetic have been used to establish causality. For example, grant found participants were in matching contexts, which is quite quite annoying and noisy, and learning and recording information. They were significantly better than if the context of mismatching. Now, when you're on the context, the study is reductionist, as there could be other factors affecting a participant's memory or in the context, and therefore may not be valid. Therefore, Does that answer the question? Mm, we probably don't need that in the end. Got into far too much detail for this question. Um, okay. Um, however, psychology may not be considered reductionist due to its use of case study methodology, methodology which collects lot of qualitative data, so that's qualitative data to truly explain the cause of behaviour in a bit of valid way, that's the terminology now, it explains behaviour. For example, Some combination of ED and I. Um, well, experience in the Ubis complex. Complex um, due to his dreams, such as due to his dreams, such as the poor dream. Hmm. For example, Freud, Freud found that little hands will experience the Ubis complex due to his dream, due to his dreams. <coughs> For 
I'm called Chloe Jerome at Little Hands with experience in the Oedipus complex, season two. His conversations with his father about his dreams. About that his father repulses and his dreams, which is a comic dream, but kind of thing of my choices. Not because of the reduction is due to its use of the case methodology, which puts a lot of quality of data to elevate its own cause of behaviour. For example, Freud found that the hands of experience the Oedipus complex due to his conversations with his father that explored the white horse splat that's from their mouths as his dreams to be a common in their symbolism with his father about his phobia um, and his dreams and such news dreams such as the one dream where the thing came from one of the bigger ones. Um, this holistic approach where all behaviours Let's go with a prediction one. Psychology can also be considered a reductionist as 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 the belief in other predicting all individuals are quite political, does not necessarily need to judge ourselves. So it can also be where a prediction of persons will hold accurate. Oh, that's a weakness though, you can't use that. So that one there would be good if you were doing a weakness of reductionism but not if you're considering whether psychology is reductionist or not. Um, so that's the one I'll go with and get rid of that. Again, this one here is a weakness of it. That's no good. What else makes something reductionist? Mentioned this, we mentioned IVs and DVs. Could you use treatments and say uh, if it, if you can use treatments then it can't be considered reductionist or it can be considered reductionist? See this is a really difficult question to answer, so it's unlikely that they would ask you something this difficult, it would probably be something like well, what are the strengths and weaknesses of human behaviour as being reductionist? Because that would be quite straightforward, you know, that prediction one that I've just got rid of, you could say, um, you know, taking a reductionist viewpoint suggests that you know the cause for behaviour. You know, for example, in Milgram, not all of the participants were determined by that um, environment, by that authoritative environment. Some of them did actually, you know, walk out, which does, is not accounting for um, the individual, the individual differences. You can't explain, you know, the first five percent that walked out because if it was reductionist, you'd be able to predict that. Um, and then, you know, saying that it's too simplistic as well. It's not got that holistic approach, it's not explaining, you know, everything. Um, we've only got kind of a, oh no, that's the opposite, yeah. And then obviously the positive of it, another strength that you can talk about is that it's got treatments. So if you can predict behaviour, you can provide treatments for it, so that would be a better route to go down. Um, in terms of it being viewed as reductionist, mm. okay, we could perhaps use it when we did the point about um, using scientific methodology. You could actually 
use that or something that says you know you're testing for the things that are reductionist so maybe maybe you consider reductionist as it uses um, a specialist technology to investigate the cause of behaviour such as fMRI scanners for example KC in fact, you could probably use the same stuff that we did last time. Let me have a look at that answer. No, that's not there. Um, so we've got here, there, that bit there. I've just put that in. So, for example, KC. It's got 27 participant brains and FMI to determine the two to the classifications. They're fine, it's all the same, you can use it. Um, Therefore, therefore, this research aim to explain delayed gratification by just by just studying the biological components of the brain, and therefore, and therefore, and therefore. <laughs> Ignored other explanations such as um, social, such as such as um, social environment and cultural impacts on this behaviour. Um, although. May not be considered reductionist as hmm, what excuse have we got that might not have been reductionist and might have taken into consideration? Lots of explanations for behaviour. Hmm, maybe we've got a banjora. It's quite holistic. What other ones do we say are holistic developmental? Okay, so not so much. Okay, so Jane, get those two confused because you all get them confused. Um, psychology may not be considered reductionist as um, research often tries to explain behaviour from a number of approaches and is therefore more holistic and holistic and valid in its conclusions. For example, uh, Banjora found that boys were more aggressive than girls when mm, after watching an aggressive role model. Sure, boys more aggressive than girls after watching an aggressive role model. It is possible to explain aggression on a social on a social approach due to social learning theory. As the children observed becomes imitated. It is also possible to explain that this behaviour is learnt through conditioning. Hmm, thinking about it, training would be better because that, because Banjora City doesn't actually look at um, operant conditioning because there's no reward and punishment. So, it, it's not really conditioned in that one. You can explain the behaviour that way in, in the real world, but not in Banjo Studies. So let's do Cheney. So for example, Cheney found that children were more adherent to taking their inhaler when using the inhaler. Mm, we're more adherent 
when using the full hair. Um, um, the conventional space of the Paris. It is possible to explain adherence and the social approach due to social learning theories which we've observed and imitated the behaviour if modelled by the parents. However, it's also possible to explain that this behaviour is learned through conditioning, such as the reward from the whistle and spin off acted as positive reinforcement and the relief from the um, symptoms from the unpleasant symptoms of asthma. I'm going to read an overall conclusion. Um, overall, overall, psychology can be viewed as being reductionist if it uses uh, scientific methods, methods and laboratory experiments. However, it is holistic in terms of its explanations. It's qualitative. I mean, I'm really tempted to put a comment on like something like reductionism is more scientific and it's probably more valid because uh, it's, you know, replicable and then it's you can see the consistency in behavior and results and stuff so it'd be uh, more reliable means more valid but then really is it valid to be so clinical and scientific like are you really going to see real behavior if you do that you're probably not because you know someone's natural behavior is affected by so many different factors but we can we really study behavior in a scientific way is it possible for that and so maybe holism is better um but that's not what the question is asking for so i'm not going to put all that stuff so there you go, I'll put this on the Google Drive um, and you can have a look at it and give you an idea of how to answer the question. Obviously this is if the question is really mean and it's like that, which is unlikely because this is a yes and, you know, I don't think it'll be that mean. It'll probably just be what's the strengths and weaknesses of view and behaviour in a reductionist way, but just in case, yeah.